Mike Flanagan is quite possibly my favorite horror director of all time. He's definitely my favorite one currently, and I have not seen all of his movies, but I have seen every single one of the series that he created, so I'm going to rank those in today's video because, of course, I'm not going to rank all of his stuff without seeing it, and... I just want to say that all these shows are really great. I really enjoy all these shows. Some of these are some of my favorites of all time, and even with the shows lower down, it doesn't mean they're bad shows at all. This is just my personal list. Let me know yours in the comments down below, but let's get into it. Coming in at number four, we have The Midnight Club. This is the newest Mike Flanagan show. He directed some of the episodes. The director has changed throughout, so I'm not going to list them all, and I really like the show. Of course, I reviewed it a few days ago. It came out about two weeks ago, and it took me a little bit to get through it. I think that says a little bit just because it's lower down because I wasn't as interested in the actual story compared to the other ones. Sometimes it does kind of go all over the place and is a little bit unfocused. One of the problems I had is that sometimes when the events outside of the stories they're telling got interesting, we didn't exactly see everything because they were just so focused on telling the stories at the actual Midnight Club, which was very good and they mattered and they all related to something that was actually happening, which I liked. But even by the end, we had a bunch of unanswered questions, but the characters are really great. Some are definitely better than others. Spencer is my favorite. Anya is probably the biggest standout. They're, they're all very good, but some of them have like almost full episodes dedicated to them and then other ones have like three scenes where we learn stuff about their past but of course that first episode having 21 or something jump scares the the world record for it it's really great this isn't so much horror like yes there's a bunch of jump scares but it's really emotional very dramatic and the whole you know plot of young adults or teenagers or whatever you want to say that are terminally ill living together i mean that that's sad in of itself there's a bunch of very heartbreaking scenes it is also hilarious but as I said, a little bit unfocused at times and I wasn't as intrigued with it as I was with some of the other shows, but still, it's great. But that's why it comes in at number four. Coming in at number three, we have The Haunting of Bly Manor. Now, people seem to be hit and miss on this show. A lot of people like it, but some people love it and think it's like perfect and everything. And a lot of people hate it and say it's boring. For me, I really, really like it. Now, I have not seen the show in over a year now. I just want to make that clear. So this is me just going from memory and I don't exactly want to watch it right away again. And that is again why it is lower down. The plot and everything is so interesting and having some of, you know, the Hill House people come back and from his other movies before come back and play different characters is great, although off-putting when you first start and you're like, oh yeah, these are completely different characters, and that obviously happens throughout all of his movies and all of his projects, I could say, but as this show keeps going and the characters develop and the plot thickens and everything, that's so cliche to say, sorry, but I don't know why I said that, it is so interesting, and knowing that this really isn't that much of a horror show, it's not about ghosts and stuff like that, it is a romance that is slowly blooming in all different ways with all different types of characters. It gives me chills thinking about some of the stuff that happens here. My title for the video I made last year on the show was A Love Story in Disguise, and that's really what this show is. I'm not going to spoil anything, but the events that some of these characters have to go through and some of them have to hide it all for different reasons is great, and the characters is really what stands out for me. I'd say especially the main ones. The kids are really great, very creepy. The standout characters for me when it comes to the side characters are definitely Hannah and Owen. This is the first time I was introduced to this perfect beautiful man over here who is one of my favorite celebrities follow him on twitter and you'll you'll see why but they are so interesting and there are specific moments kind of towards the middle of the series and you know the scenes if you've watched the show that really just get you invested and when you go and you learn more about them throughout it's it's really great the reason it is lower down is because this show is very slow and sometimes i wasn't really sure where it was going sometimes it didn't seem like it really knew and it was definitely stretched out a bit but when some of the, the crazy shit happens i mean it, it's pretty mind-blowing and the small character moments are really the best parts of this series coming in at number two we have midnight mass now midnight mass came out last year and the fact that flanagan has been making stuff yearly for six-ish years is uh, mind-blowing for me, and Midnight Mass is an absolute masterpiece. This show is perfect. I have zero complaints with it. The only reason it isn't number one is just because I prefer number one because it's my favorite miniseries of all time, but Midnight Mass, 
I watched these two shows prior, like the first two, the first two haunting shows, and then went into this one, and it absolutely blew me away. The way that Flanagan deals with religion, not in an anti or pro religious way, is just amazing. Once again, the characters here are the standout. You have this very interesting, of course, some creepy demonic stuff going on. I mean, if you haven't seen the show, you were doing yourself a disservice because there are so many mind-blowing moments, especially towards the end, of course, because it's a horror thriller type show. So as it goes along, it gets pretty crazy. But even within the first episode, there's so many moments where you're like, what is happening here on Crockett Island? And I would absolutely love to watch the show again. I have only seen it once, but there is so much having the young priest and be like, who, who is this guy? And some people don't care at all. You have people like Samantha Sloan's character who is just like the umbrage of all these characters. Like you hate her so much, but she is so good in the show. The whole cast is truly amazing. Again, having returning people here. This is the first time that I was introduced to Zach Guilford as somewhat of the, one of the main characters, I'll say. Everybody, I mean, I could go on and list this person, this person, they're all great. Everybody's great in this show. There are so many moments that I would love to talk about, but because I don't want to spoil anything, because if I say the tiniest little thing, it will spoil it. I will just say, I, I got my dad to watch this show, and he doesn't watch anything horror, maybe sometimes thriller, but even with the creepy satanic stuff in here as well. It's just a masterpiece. But of course, coming in at number one is The Haunting of Hill House. I have almost finished watching this one again with my girlfriend. I wanted to show her it. This is my favorite miniseries of all time. As I mentioned, I don't think I have seen anything when it comes to a miniseries that has come close to this. The only one really that I can think of is Midnight Mass, and sure, there are other ones that I, that I definitely need to watch, but the way that Flanagan studies trauma here and uses ghosts to mask that is perfect. There is not a single issue I have with the show, the way that every single character basically gets their episode for like the kids, they get their own episode dedicated to them, but it doesn't only feel like, it's not just they're singled out with there, we get still evolving stories with all of them, and of course, the way that they use the bent neck lady or all, all these other things, um, what's the one, like the man with the top hat, I forget, uh, the, was it the crooked man? I think that's, that's what they call him here, and they use that to represent other things. I mean, it really is perfect, and I believe that this show has the greatest jump scare of all time in the second half of it. I'm not going to say when it is, if you have not seen it, but trust me, it is amazing. Normally when jump scares happen, I'm just like, oh, this is a stupid way to kind of relieve the tension, but no, in this show, I mean, Mike Flanagan really proves how great he is here. I think that this is the best thing he's ever done. I highly doubt he will get anywhere close to as good as this again, but I mean, Midnight Mass was almost as good as this. I've made a whole video on this. I will talk about The Haunting of Hell House whenever somebody asks. It is one of my favorite things ever. It is so inspirational. Everything about it is perfect, but let me know your ranking of Mike Flanagan stuff down in the comments below. I'm very interested because some people have some mixed thoughts on some of these shows, but thank you all for watching. I will see you guys next time. Over and out.